Well, uh, uh, good evening everybody uh, and a very warm uh, welcome to all of you in today's session. Uh, before I actually start with the, you know, the agenda, first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Sanjeev Berg and I have been working in the IT sector for the last uh, 18 years in various capacities. Uh, last few years I have been, you know, working as a full-time trainer on PMP and uh, Agile, so that's just, uh, you know, a very brief about uh, uh, myself. In today's session, uh, as you can see, you know, the PPT, uh, we would be talking about how the estimation is actually done in the projects which are executed using Agile methodology and uh, what are the tools and techniques and methods, you know, which are available to arrive uh, at a, you know, a reasonable estimate. Now, before I actually start talking about things, you know, which are very, very specific to Agile, I think it is, you know, worth uh, spending few moments uh, talking about what we actually mean by estimation. <clears throat> well, uh, estimation you know, in a, as a as a as a general uh, terminology, you know, uh, estimation it could be in the traditional project management also, it could be in agile also, or it could be in rapid application development or waterfall model. Estimation, you know, the definition of estimation is actually you know in same, whichever uh, uh, flavor you know you pick for executing your uh, project. So what actually you know we mean by estimation? Estimation is actually a projection, you know, about about something. It is a projection about something, and how do we project? We project based on the information which is available at that point of a time. So, and you know, adding further, it is actually a probability and an approximation. Okay, uh, uh, when I say probability or approximation, why I'm basically using these two words, because when we tip off you know, the project, when I get the business requirement document from the customer, at that point of time, we do not have clarity on lot of requirements. In fact, the customer himself is not very, very clear about the scope of the project. So assuming that there are some 30 requirements which I got from the customer, and I sit along, you know, with the business analyst, and I sit, sit along with the subject matter expert, and then we find out that we need a lot of information from the business community, you know, who are sitting at the customer location. But still, I need to give some number to the customer, saying that we would be needing X amount of hours or X amount of money to complete this project. So that is the reason, you know, why we say that estimation is always an approximation. So today if I am saying that we would be able to deliver this project maybe, you know, in X amount of dollars, let's say $100, and we are in the inception phase of the project. We, we have just started the project and we have just the business requirement document from the customer. So we arrive at that number, we make certain assumptions, we keep some buffer and then we tell to the customer that we would be needing X amount of money or X amount of resources or X amount of, you know, art to complete the project. Now, as and when, you know, uh, things, you know, unfold from inception, we go to the subsequent phases of the project, say requirement analysis, then we get into design, then we get into the construction phase. We come across a lot of information, we come across lot of clarification from the from the customer and at that point of the time the estimate you know which we had given in the beginning maybe it was maybe you know 10 hours okay and now we think it should, it should not be 10 hours maybe it should be 20 hours okay so in a nutshell whatever I'm what I'm saying is that estimation especially in the beginning of the project you know it is always an approximation it is always you know, a probability and we arrive at that approximation 
based on the information which is available at that point of a time. Now, there are different, you know, units available uh, as to, you know, how do we, how do we uh, measure, like in your real life, you know, you have various units, like you have tons, you have pounds, you have grams, you have millimeters, you have centimeters. So these are, you know, some of the estimation units which we basically uh, use in, uh, in our, in our uh, daily life. Now, talking in the context of uh, software development, we have two uh, very popular uh, uh, units. Uh, the first one is called as lines of code, and the second one is called as you know the function point. Now, both these uh, methods or both these you know units uh, we use uh, in the traditional project management. Now, when I say traditional project management, it could be using you know waterfall, or it could be using spiral, or it could be using Incrementer, or it could be using rapid application development methodology. So these two units we basically use while you know we are executing a project on a traditional uh, uh, methodology. Another thing I uh, want to you know uh, share at this point in time that throughout this presentation, when I am using the word estimate, I am basically referring to the site. So if you can see here on this slide, when we say estimate, there are two dimensions. The first one is called as size and the second one is called as duration. Okay. And you, as you can see on this slide, supposing you know there is a building, okay, say Dubai Dubai Tower, and then uh, you know when the consultant people when they approach you know, the architect and to, to arrive at a number, you know, arrive at a dollar value. So first of all the architect, you know, he needs to know what is the total size of the structure? Okay, and based on that total size, they arrive at the duration. Okay, so throughout this presentation, I am talking about only the size part. We are not talking about the duration part. I basically, you know, thought of you know uh, mentioning it because uh, during uh, most of my uh, sessions, uh, whenever you know uh, I talk about estimate, uh, most of the people think that. It only means duration. Means when you have a requirement, you would be needing 10 hours to post that requirement. But they forget, you know, the initial step. Before calculating the effort, you need to know what is the size of the requirement. Okay? So that's what I basically, you know, sort of uh, uh, clarifying. Okay, so in traditional project management, as I said, that we have uh, two measures. One is called as the lines of code, and second one is called as the function point. Okay, now when we talk about agile, in agile we have uh, only two things, you know, which are available to us for uh, arriving at the size of the requirement. The first one is called as the story point, and the second one is called as you know the ideal day. If you compare both the both the you know approaches in traditional project management to arrive at a function point, you know you need expert. So there are people in the organization. Maybe they have done some certification in doing the function point analysis, or maybe they, you know uh, uh, they know how to how to interpret the design document or how to interpret the requirement document, and then you know they arrive at. Uh, a function point uh, a number and based on the technology uh, so supposing if we are dealing with a project and the project would be you know using maybe .NET or Java there are some industry standards. Function point itself is a very time consuming activity rather you know it's a very complex you know activity whereas while we see the, the mechanism available in agile story point and ideal days are very very simple and very very straightforward I mean, you don't need any uh, uh, what I should say uh, a special kind of a skill to arrive at that. Okay, these many story points are you know we need to build in in a particular project. Now, what exactly you know we mean by we mean by you know story point. Uh, now, 
while I was talking about the function point in traditional uh, project management, function point or lines of code is a very objective analysis of you know the size of the system. It is based on some algorithm. It is based on some you know well-established mathematical rules. But while we talk about story point in agile, it is not based on any algorithm. It is not based on any mathematical uh, you know formula. It is you know something which is uh, it is an arbitrary you know a measure, a number given to a requirement. Okay, so supposing if there are 10 requirements in my project, then I assign a number to each one of you know the requirements. So requirement number one, I say, okay, the size of this requirement is two. When I say requirement number two, the size of the requirement is five. Okay, now it might be sound you know sounding uh, very confusing. So I'd like to you know share one one example here that what exactly you mean by story point. Now as you can see on your uh, console, uh, just assume that there is a sailor, okay, and this sailor, he is stranded uh, in the middle of the ocean, okay. Now he has a binocular and he wants to see, you know, some nearest island and he uses, you know, his binocular and he sees that there is, a, that there is an island, okay. But the problem is he doesn't know how far that island is. He doesn't know whether it will take him to arrive to reach at that island 20 hours or 30 hours or 40 hours or in the first place what is the total distance means that island is 20 nautical miles from his boat or 40 nautical miles from his boat he doesn't know that. So what he basically does based on his you know, experiences because he's been sailing in the ocean for the last you know many years, he just uses his gut feel and he assigns a number you know to the distance and he say okay it seems to me that it is 12 nautical miles away from the boat. Okay now he uses you know his uh, uh, binocular again to see if there are some more islands. Now he sees a couple of more islands. Now what he will do, he will you know, try to compare the first island, you know, with the second island. So it it, it may be the case that uh, the second island is, you know, double the distance of you know the first island, or second scenario could be that the second island it may be half the distance of the first island. So what basically he is doing that initially when he saw the first island, he just assign a number to that island that it seems to me it is 12 nautical miles. Now while looking at the second island, he is using the first island as a baseline and then he is comparing the second island with the first island and then giving it a number to the second island. So as you can see on the slide that you know the first island he says okay it is 12 nautical miles, second island is also 12 nautical miles, but the third island, which is further away from both the islands, he is saying it is 24 nautical miles. So, what we are doing here, we are basically arriving at a distance, you know, first of all, taking a baseline island and then we calculate the distance of the remaining island in relation with the first island. It is called as relative sizing. So this number is actually called as a story point in agile. As I told you, again I am saying this number is not based on any mathematical uh, expression. There is uh, no formula using which I can arrive at this number. Unlike function point or lines of code wherein we derive the effort estimate from the function point. So supposing if a size if a size of an application is 20 function points, then we have well defined mathematical expression and I can very easily say that 20 function points is equal to maybe 200 hours of you know uh, man month man month uh, effort. 
but it absolutely not the case while we are talking about story points in agile okay story points in agile are basically used for some other purpose what is that purpose we would be you know uh, talking in uh, details not in this particular uh, presentation but in in uh, you know uh, next session which would be on uh, uh, you know 19th of april but just for now just understand that the story point is a number given to a requirement in relation with other uh, other other requirement there is another example given out you know here as you can see on your console uh, supposing you know we have a house okay which has you know bedroom number 1 bedroom number 2 and we have kitchen and we have bathroom and we have you know the living room and then we are calling a painter okay and this painter he has to paint you know the entire house he comes to my house and then he is looking at he is going to you know all the bathroom okay and now you know like if you if you see on your uh, screen say kitchen you know he says that okay it is five points okay now if you see above you know which is the living room it is 13 points so you can clearly say that it is you know bigger in size if you are looking at you know the bathroom which is 3 point it is lesser than you know uh, the kitchen which is 5 point or if you you know look at uh, another bathroom which is 2 point the 2 point it has to be small in size if you compare it with maybe you know kitchen or maybe with some other some other uh, uh, you know room in the house so in a nutshell what basically we are saying that the story point when we are assigning a point to a requirement first of all we select one requirement you know which is meaningful to everybody you know which we understand thoroughly and then all the development team along with you know the subject matter expert they sit together and then they say okay let's give this story let's give this requirement a story point number which is 5 now anything which is having a 10 story point any requirement which is having 10 story point it has to be double in size you know uh, Uh, as compared to the story which is having you know a uh, uh, five story point so one factor how hard it is and it is actually a relative value so if a login screen is having a story point 2 a search feature would be you know 8 okay so if a requirement if it is size at 2 anything which is size at 4 it has to be double in complexity you know if you compare it with a login screen which has been given a number number 2 okay so it is just a arbitrary you know number given to the requirement so uh if anybody has uh, you know any any query and uh, or any any question you can type you know in the qa uh, qa uh, window and i'll be uh, responding to the same because this particular concept is uh, very very important the entire agile methodology is actually based on this only so if anybody is finding it difficult to understand it he will be able to do understand you know you know the subsequent uh, uh, topics so as you can see uh, you know on the next slide uh, we have a different method of uh, doing the estimation in agile okay i can you know give a number i can give a number starting from 0 1 2 3 5 uh, we can also use you know fibonacci number 0 1 2 3 5 way or we can also use you know uh, a method you know which is 
given out there on the slide, I can see that this story point, sorry, this particular requirement is of medium size, or this particular requirement is of large size, or this particular requirement is of extra large size. So depending upon you know which way, which method I am comfortable or which method you know has a relevance to me, I can I can you know use that uh, uh, particular uh, uh, particular uh, method. So as you can see on the slide that uh, you know the point scale that indicates the size of a story relative to a baseline story. Now. In Agile, the requirements are called as user story. Okay, it's one and the same thing. It's just a different terminology, a different name is given to the requirement. In traditional project management, we call requirement. In Agile, we call those requirements as user story. So going forward, I would be using the term user story. When I say user story, you think I am talking about requirement only. So. Sizing of you know, user story is a key part of understanding the overall effort required to create a product release. Okay? So as I said in the beginning that when we say estimate, it has two components. The first component is called as the size and the second component is called as the effort duration. Okay? If I don't know the size, I cannot arrive at the effort. Okay? If I don't know the size of a book, if I don't know how many pages are there in the book, how would I know that it would take me, you know, X amount of hours to complete the book based on my speed? You know, if I am able to read maybe 10 pages in, in 2 minutes or 3 minutes, so I need to know first of all what are the total number of pages in a book. That is called as a size. And based on that size, based on my speed, I, I arrive at a effort. Okay? Uh, using this uh, method, you know, uh, a developer uh, or the development team, they are able to quickly, uh, they are, you know, quickly able to uh, size the uh, requirement so that they can come up with a schedule, okay? Like in traditional project management, we have something called a Gantt chart. Gantt chart, you know, it is uh, you know, a chart which we see in uh, a scheduling tool called Microsoft Project, okay? So that, uh, that plan that we would be delivering, you know, the deliverable or the work packages uh, to the customer on, you know, on the different days. So that whole plan is called as a release plan in Agile, okay? So using story points, uh, uh, we are uh, able to quickly arrive at a, a plan, the plan which talks about the uh, the delivery schedule uh, to the uh, uh, to the to the customer. And uh, one very important aspect, uh, you know, about story point is, I mean. The development team, the people who are part of the project, they don't find sharing, you know, the effort. If suppose if you are going to a, a developer and if you share a user story with him, if you share a requirement with him and you say that, okay, I give you 10 minutes and you tell me how long it will take me, how, how long it will take you to code this requirement. Now the developer, he goes through the requirement and he sees that he needs some clarification. So majority of you know, the people, you know, if they are not very, very clear about the requirement, if they think that they need some more information from the customer, they feel, you know, they don't feel comfortable in sharing that, okay, for them it will take maybe 20, 20 hours of effort or 40 hours of effort, they, they don't feel comfortable. But if I ask the same developer, just could you please give me what is the size of this requirement? You know, this is the baseline requirement. So uh, keeping in mind that this is the baseline requirement and the size of this baseline requirement is say five story point. Now I am giving you a, you know, a new requirement. 
can you please tell me whether it should be 10 or it should be 20 or it should be 2 or it should be 40. So that way, you know, he, he, he doesn't feel uncomfortable, okay, because you are asking him only about the size. Now when, I, when he says that, okay, as for him, the size of the requirement or the user story should be 10, that 10 doesn't mean that it will take him, you know, to complete that requirement, to post that requirement in 40 hours. As I said in the beginning, there is no mathematical formula. I mean, if I am saying that a particular requirement, if I am giving full story point to the requirement, I don't need 40 hours. That, it doesn't mean that I'll multiply 10 by 4 and I'll say that whosoever works on this requirement, maximum amount of time that would be given to him would be 40. So effort estimation is altogether a different thing. We are just talking about, you know, size. So most of the developers, most of the people, they feel comfortable when you ask them about what is the size of the requirement. But if you ask them what is the total number of efforts which is required to complete or post the requirement, they won't, they won't do that until and unless you give them all the information. And as I said in the beginning, that when we are in the inception phase, when we have just started the project, when we have only the business requirement document, where we have all the, it is very, very difficult to give the effort estimate. Now at that point of the time, the best, you know, method available is you just give each requirement a size based on your gut feel, based on your experience, based on your discussion with the subject matter expert. Okay, I can see, uh, I can see, uh, you know, one, one, uh, one question, one query uh, in the QA window. Visual estimation is easily, easy compared to it. Uh, development that non-IT folks are too less. So how can they give the, give the estimate? Uh, this uh, query came from Satna. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Sapna, uh, uh, I'm really not able to uh, uh, interpret. Like, uh, what exactly are you trying to? What, what exactly are you trying to ask? Or maybe you can you can type your you can type your question again. What exactly you mean by visual estimation? Sapna, are you there? Satnam, can you hear me? Okay, okay, okay. I'll I'll agree with you. One second. Uh, Raj, are you there? Raj, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yes. Uh, Raj, I need to unmute uh, Satnam. Sure. Just a minute. Yeah, Satnam, we have unmuted you. You can speak okay. now. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. No. Yeah, okay, great. Huh? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I have been uh, doing this, and, and uh, the problem that we run into, when I say visual, yeah, I can see, anybody can see the sizes of t-shirts or islands or some distance or whatever, uh, or even a building for that matter. But when you talk about uh, the the story uh, user stories, uh, the business uh, team they know what feature they want or what they want, the functionality they want. They have no clue what it will go into making that happen. 
right? So how can they say, oh, this is a this is going to be a twenty or versus two? How how are they making that judgment? I mean, that's the difficulty that I have run into, is that <clears throat> the the I have in the team uh, the the product owner and the business uh, stakeholders, as well as development teams, testers, uh, and uh, and and it it seems to have been very hard for the business team uh, to figure out how to size it. Uh, so okay. Any kind of comments uh, on that? Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, the uh, the first you know thing I would like to share with you that uh, uh, the business team they have they have uh, given the requirement to the vendor. Okay. We have a product owner, we have a scum master, and we have the scum team available with us. Uh, the first and the most important thing I would like to share that estimate, it always comes from the development team. The customer is not uh, giving me the size of the user story. Customer job is done when he has given the requirement to me. Now it is my responsibility you know, as a team, to arrive at the estimate, to arrive at the size of the requirement or size of the user story. So, so now, that was my uh, question as to who is involved when you're doing the story points. Because I was, uh, uh, I have read and uh, and and number of people have said that uh, when you're doing the story points, the whole team is there, including the business people. Yeah. Now, when you when you say you know the business people, the initial discussion you know which happens, like when we have just got the requirement from the customer. Okay, the first discussion you know it happens. I mean, the requirements are so vague that if I call you know all the development team people, I mean it won't it won't serve the purpose. I need to have you know the initial discussion with the business people to arrive at you know some clarity on the requirement. Okay. Now the job of you know the business uh, team is to give me the clarification on the on the requirement. Now once I have the clarification, once you know the product owner you know who sometimes or most of the time is from the business community, he he is you know the person who understands you know the requirement. Now he sits along uh, you know with the people uh, with the people when I say people the people from the development team, okay, and then you know uh, a discussion happens out there. Brainstorming, you know, happens out there. In fact, sometimes selecting a baseline user story, it becomes a mammoth task. Okay, so this is the first time we are going through the requirement, and if I, I'm not even able to pick up, you know, the baseline user story. So yes, sometimes there are there are you know challenges. Despite having all the information from the customer, sometimes it is very very difficult to arrive at our site. Okay, now the the first point which I want to make clear. The sizing is actually done from the development team in consultation with the people from the business community. Now, when I say business community, I mean the product owner also. Okay. Now, this activity is not something which would, which I would be able to do in two hours or three hours. Sometimes it takes you know the complete week to understand the requirement. Because until and unless I understand the requirement, how would I be able to size the requirement? Now, if I say it is a medium-sized requirement, or if I say that this user story or this requirement, if I am giving a number 20, 20 is based on what? So, initial hiccups are always there. Selecting the baseline story is sometimes, you know, becomes a very, very challenging task. Okay, a lot of discussion happens, you know, with the people from the business community who are sitting at a customer location. But ultimately, the sizing is done from the development team only. Okay. Uh, one more uh, little bit of question. Uh, do you do this uh, uh, sizing before beginning the project, or do you do uh, for the each uh, sprint? Okay. Now, uh, there are basically uh, uh, three level of uh, basically you know planning which uh, we do in Agile, you know, we have daily planning, okay, we have iteration planning, or we have the release planning, okay. Now, I'm basically, I'll talk in terms of traditional project management, so that the people who are, 
very new to agile, they should also be you know able to understand what I'm basically you know talking here. Now think for a moment when you get the requirement from the customer, you get the business requirement document from the customer, okay? And the customer is giving me a one week of time, and he's saying that uh, you come up with document of understanding, or you come up with the project charter, okay? And after one week, you need to call for a meeting, and you need to share the high-level milestones with me. You need to share how many people you would be deploying onto the project. You would be sharing based on the information which we have shared with you. Do you see any risk? You need to share what are the constraints. You need to share what are the current issues. Now, the entire activity, I have been given one week of time, and I am the project manager. Okay. Now, when I go through the business requirement document, okay. Now, business requirement document, 50% of the requirement are at a very high level, very very abstract requirement, and I am not able to make any head or tail out of those requirements. Now, what I do, I call for a meeting with the with the business people who are from the customer side. And I discuss with them about all the requirements, not in very detail, okay? I'm just trying to understand the high level functionality. That's all. I'm not trying to, you know, jump deep inside the ocean and then try to understand each and every thread of the requirement. My only purpose at this point in time is to understand what this project is all about. Now this project, I need to deliver 10 requirements. I need to quote 10 requirements. What is the meaning of those 10 requirements? So that my senior developer, they're in a position to tell me that the size of you know, uh, all the requirement is 20 function points. 20 function points means maybe you know, 100 hours. Okay. After one week, when we are giving the information to the, to the customer, I'm talking about the inception phase. Now that estimate is called as ROM. ROM basically means rough order of magnitude. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if you uh, if you if you know this term. Now uh, there are two kinds of you know estimate. There is one estimate which is given in the planning phase of the project. There is another estimate which is basically given to the customer once we are done with the design part. Once we have written down the low level uh, you know design okay we know the requirement fully so the estimate which was given in the beginning just for just for a moment just assume that required the estimate was 100 hours now wrong the estimate which was given in the planning phase it can be 120 hours also or it can be 80 hours also so there is a range there why we have the range there because we do not have all the information available with us. Now, when we have written down the low-level design, that means we are very well aware about the nitty-gritty of you know, all the requirements. So, we revise the estimate. Same thing happens in Agile also. The sizing which we have done in the beginning, when I say beginning, we have just got the requirement of the user story, and I need to size all the user stories. I need to size all the requirements. Now, the the uh, the sizing which is given you know in the beginning and while we are into the execution phase it happens most of the time that those numbers are revised do you understand what I'm saying yeah I I, I don't think we are in this many process because my client is sitting right next to me I mean okay. and we, it's, it it is in the same um, like functional department, and okay. so we don't we we don't have this formalized um, relationship. Now, right? well, basically, I shared with you you know the high level process. Okay, the you know in a nutshell, what I'm basically trying to say that the schedule or the estimate which is shared in the beginning with the customer that always has a range. So if a number which is say 80 given to the customer, those 80 could be 80 dollars also or it could be 80 man months also. So it might happen while, you know, uh, while we go to the subsequent phases of the project, that 80, it may become 100 or it may become 60. But what is the 80 based on? That's what I'm saying. As I said in the beginning, that, that 80 is 
based on after I have the discussion with the customer, I have the discussion with the business people, and now I am able to understand, you know, what this particular requirement is all about. And we 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 discuss about you know the requirement, and then we come to a conclusion where we say that this requirement it sounds you know very very relevant. Okay, so let's make this uh, requirement as a baseline requirement. And size of other requirement in comparison with this requirement. Okay. So, I mean, again, it is not very really objective. You know, it is very subjective in nature. And in any agile project, you know, uh, the whether it is story point or it is ideal days, it goes through you know multiple iterations. It goes through, you know, lot of, not lot of changes, but it goes through, you know, uh, changes. Okay. Right, Sata? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I I can see, uh, 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 you know. Uh, Gentlemen called Nawaz. Uh, one story point could be equal to one day, four hour, one week. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Nawaz. Uh, uh, as, as I said, that uh, you cannot uh, you cannot say that one story point means one day of effort or it is four hours of effort. It is not. It doesn't work this way. Raj, can you please uh, unmute uh, Nawaz? Yeah, just a minute. Let me do it. Yeah. Yeah, Nawaz, I have unmuted you. You can speak now. Yeah, Nawaz. Hi. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yes. I can hear you, Nawaz. So, you know, response to your uh, question, I mean, uh, it doesn't work this way. Uh, I mean, we can't say that uh, one story point means four hours of effort or one hour, one week of effort. Uh, we don't do, we don't work this. I mean, it doesn't work this way in agile. So, what we mean by one story point then, like when we say that? Okay. Uh, yeah. okay. Now, a story point uh, is used for a different purpose uh, in in agile. Uh, while we are giving, you know, a plan. To the uh, to the customer. Uh, in fact, you know because you know you are moving too fast. Because uh, if I start talking about you know uh, why we basically use story point, uh, this whole discussion will go on a different angle. Okay. So what I would basically suggest you uh, let's pass these you know questions here only. Uh, otherwise, you know uh, other people who are basically very new to agile. Uh, they would be completely lost. Okay, understood. So, so yeah, other people. I mean, it won't be of any use. The information you know, which I will share, it wouldn't be for any use to those people. Okay, sure. So, thank uh, you, apologies, uh, Nawaz. Uh, so, uh, we are uh, like on this slide that there are different uh, methods available for. Sizing uh, uh, the uh, stories or the requirement in a in a agile methodology. Uh, the second uh, mechanism which we have in agile is called as ideal days. Okay. Uh, now before I start talking about you know ideal days, let me uh, take you through uh, one important you know thing. How do we do the estimate in an agile project? Okay. There is something called as you know planning poker. Now planning poker is nothing you know but a deck of cards. Now as I was saying that uh, the estimate, the best estimate, it always comes from the people who will work on those requirements. So what basically happens that all the people who are part of uh, who are part of the project, they basically they go to a you know a conference hall along with the Scrum master and the product owner, or the moderator, or the facilitator. Okay. Now, moderator 
he reads out a particular requirement. Now everybody in that room has a deck of planning poker cards. Now planning poker card, as you can see on on your console also, each card has a number. Okay, starting from like if we are following a linear uh, scale, then we will have zero, one, two, three, four, five. Or if we are following you know the Fibonacci series, it would be zero, one, two, three, five, eight. Now everybody has a deck of cards with him. Now moderator he will read out the requirement. Okay, he will read out the requirement, and he will also share the nitty-gritty, the lower level information, the lower level details which are attached with that requirement. Now he will share that information, and he will give some you know time to all the people, and those people they will they will you know uh, do some uh, arithmetic on a piece of paper, or they will do some some scribbling on a piece of paper. And then what they will do? They will take out a card, okay, from the deck of deck of cards, and they will take out a card and they will just keep it on the on the on the table. Now all the all the cards, uh, you know, everybody like was given some 10 minutes or 15 minutes or half an hour. Now after that, you know, the time is uh, over over. Uh, the, the the cards you know which are placed on the table immediately those cards will be turned over and now everybody can see you know the estimate now in this whole activity what is happening there is that the person who is sitting next to me maybe you know he has given uh, a story point size of five to that requirement okay maybe I have given ten story point to a particular requirement. Maybe the third person has given maybe say 20 to the same very requirement. So what basically we are trying to do, we are trying to come up with a consensus. Okay. So the people who are far away from you know the majority of the people, the majority of the people, the range is say three to six. Most of the people have given a story point starting from three to six, but then there are two you know, developer uh, in that room who think that the uh, size of that requirement, it should not be 3 or it should not be 6, it should be 15. Okay. And in that case, a discussion happens with those people as to why they think that, that it should be 15 or it is, uh, you know, uh, we arrive at uh, the estimate, when I say estimate, the size of, you know, the requirement the size of uh, the size of the uh, user story, and this uh, method is uh, uh, called as uh, uh, planning poker. I mean, as you can see on the, it brings together multiple expert opinion. Each estimator is given a deck of planning cards, and as I said, each card has one of the valid estimates. Example is given there: one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty. For each user story or a theme, the moderator who is usually the product owner or maybe a business analyst, he reads the description of the requirement. Some description happens wherein maybe the developer they have some queries and they want some clarification. The product owner he gives the clarification uh, uh, to the uh, development team. Now each estimator, when I say estimator, I'm talking about the people who are part of the development team, they privately select the planning broker card representing his or her agile estimation. Once each estimator has made a selection, card cut simultaneously turn over. Why basically we do that? So that, I mean, I am not biased. Now, supposing if I know up front that the person who is sitting next to me, he has given 10. And when I look at my card, I was thinking that this particular requirement should be size at 2. I will immediately think it over and I will maybe pick up a different card which is close to 10. So it is a very unbiased way of arriving you know, at an estimate. Now it might happen that during the first cycle we have a development team and we have 10 development you know, uh, team members and majority of them have you know, numbers which are you know, kind of a two poles apart. Somebody is saying 10, developer number 2 he is saying 20, number 3 is saying maybe 50, number 4 is saying you know something else. 
So we have too many variations, we have too many ranges. In that case, again the discussion happens with the people, you know, maybe why he thinks he should be 20 or 30 or whatever. And this, you know, cycle, it goes on, multiple iteration, you know, takes place, and then it goes on till the time where we have a majority of, you know, the people who are thinking more or less about the same story point. Uh, does it make any sense to uh, all of you? If, if anybody has uh, any doubts on planning program, I mean, you can type in his uh, query in the QA, QA window. Uh, because this is a very, very important thing, and there are two, uh, you know, questions in the actual ATP examination. Two of the questions are always there on uh, uh, planning program. So Satnam is saying that he has already. Uh, he's already done that, and then I see uh, 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 a comment given by David. Uh, David is saying the so story point only prioritize based on size, not uh, important. Uh, no, uh, David, uh, I'm responding to your query. The prioritization is done not based on the story point. The prioritization is done based on the importance of that requirement to the customer. So those requirements which are very, very critical to the customer, the prioritization is done based on that importance, based on that value. The prioritization is never done based on the size of the user story. I mean, I, 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 we don't do this way that uh, a user story having a story point value of two would be addressed, you know, uh, in the beginning and then we will take a user story which has been estimated at maybe three or four. It is never done that way. It is done based on if it is, you know, the, the importance for the customer. Okay, so uh, and there is another method which is called as white band delphi. Uh, this is another method of uh, uh, doing the uh, sizing in uh, in agile project. The difference between planning poker and the white band delphi, there is only one difference, and the difference is. In planning for poker, I know that in my team, you know, uh, 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 let's be supposing if we have a team of 10 people, I know what was the estimate given by developer number one or developer number two. I, everybody knows, you know, the estimate uh, given by all the people. While we are doing white band delphi, it is anonymous. Now, I don't know what was, you know, what is the estimate, and as estimate, you know, given by my peer. It is completely anonymous. Everybody is given a paper, okay. The paper, it has, uh, you know, again here, you know, as you can see here, uh, there, is a, there is a flow given out there. The coordinator presents each expert with a specification and an estimation form. A group meeting, uh, Experts discuss estimation issues with the coordinator with each other. Now, the people, when I say expert here, experts are nothing but the development team. They fill out this form, okay, and and they basically uh, give this form back to the back to the moderator or the coordinator. And my colleagues, my uh, peers, they do not know what number I have I mentioned on that piece of paper. So it is basically completely anonymous, okay. And again here, uh, we have multiple iterations because again like planning poker in white band Delphi, it might happen that everybody is come up, coming up with a, you know, a number which is nowhere, you know, close to what other people have, what, what other people have, you know, given. So here also we have multiple iterations and it keeps on going until and unless we, we see, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, consensus, majority of the people think that a particular requirement should be, you know, size at maybe 5, 6, 7, but not 20. So those outliers, you know, those people who are saying that this particular user story should be size at 20, but not 3, again the discussion happens with those people as to why they think that it should be 20 and not, uh, you know, not 2 or 3. Okay. So as you can see, you know, the process, experts fill out form anonymously and then coordinator prepares and distributes a summary of the estimate. Group meeting specifically focusing on the variation in the estimate and then they fill out the form anonymously and step number 4 to 6 is, you know, they are again repeated. So again, when we see that there are variations, then the entire process or you know to to uh, everybody it is a very uh, a popular uh, uh, technique uh, which we uh, like uh, use in agile in fact it is a variant of a delphi method and here we it is basically you know more productive so we have a estimation method, uh, method called delphi which is a plain vanilla uh, method so there is a guy called Barry Boham and uh, John they originated, they, you know, uh, tweaked the uh, earlier Delphi uh, method and they came up, you know, a more refined way of, you know, arriving uh, at the, uh, you know, size estimate uh, in, in a dive. Uh, anybody has uh, any, any doubt? Raj, I think uh, we are done with the plot. Sure. Uh, yeah. All right, folks, if you have any question, you can ask your question. 